Bros play. A proper sink is important for both cleaning your dishes and. Anyway, you have, a, you have, an, <laughs> in, you have an intro. <laughs> a good sink is what you need. A good sink in the kitchen, a good sink in the basement. Dude, I got a story about a sink. Do you see that shot? That was amazing. Fucking nice shot. Fucking nice shots. Fucking nice shot. Oh, now you get your 2020. Now, BJ's are 2020 in North Korea. Yeah, man, yo, in four years, it's gonna be all about the scout BJ's. That hindsight tw is 2020 is the most bullshit statement I've ever heard. How many times a day do you argue with people about things that happened and how they happened and who, what's, who said? I think your hindsight is 2020, but you would, yeah, you can definitely still have some pretty significant disagreements. I've had people just tell me things that like, they're like, Oh, you, did you want me to do that? I'm like, no, you wanted to do that. You asked me to do that. <laughs> like I had a guy like asked me to take one of his shifts and I was like, are you coming in for that? And he's like, do you want me to? I'm like, no, no, you asked for this. But the, like, what? I don't want you to do anything. <laughs> I didn't, I don't care. I'd rather just do the shifts that I had on the schedule. It's less complicated. You asked for this. <laughs> like, no, I, I don't want you to. Anyway, I have a sink story. So I, um, I, uh, I left... This thing's about to blow, brother. Um, I left a pot in the sink, and it left a little like ring around it. And so I, I, I cleaned the ring, and then I, I, I like with like a like a scrubby, which I hadn't really done in the past. Um, in the past, I had assumed that my sink had just permanent stains on it, like lots of sinks do. And the, this apartment's had a lot of people in it, so it's 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 uh, it's a little dirty. And so I go to clean it, and I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, it was like chrome. Really? Like chrome underneath. Like it was like that shiny. Like it's not it's not actually chrome, it's stainless steel, but it was so shiny compared to what it was, it was a different color. And I started cleaning the whole thing and I'm like, I'm blown away. I'm like, as if this fucking sink was that dirty. I didn't like it was ah, cuz I assumed based on the 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 kitchen sink or the uh, the bathroom sinks cuz they cuz they have those permanent stains. And then I with everything but the kitchen sink. And then I thought, well, if this one wasn't wasn't permanent stains, I wonder what the other ones. Turns out they weren't permanent either. Turns out these sinks were just so dirty, they looked like they were permanently dirty. And I cleaned them in like an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, there's actually some people that are just, like, there's actually some people in the world, I mean, this is not common, but there are some people in the world that are actually so lazy, they'll move into a place, ruin it, and move out. Yeah. There are people that actually do that. There's people who don't even deal with their garbage, they'll just leave it in the place and move on to another location. Yep. We heard a story a few years ago, um, you remember Fluffy on YouTube, right? Stop driving so I yeah. can hijack you. I love Fluffy. Um, Fluffy was talking about a story where two people were living in this apartment, and after a while, people started like wondering what was going on, and then all of a sudden they were just gone. And they went into the apartment, and it was just covered in piss and shit. Oh. And they found out that these people had just been like inhaling their own piss and shit to get high. Oh. And they just left it all around the apartment. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, I was just watching a movie. There's two types of people in this world. Called uh, Rage. Um, it, is Nicholas, it based off the game? No. Oh. It's Nicolas Cage is the main character. They really should have called it Rage with Nicolas Cage, but whatever. Rage in the cage. <laughs> I'm the movie maker. What the fuck do I know? Um, but... Uh, he he busts into this apartment. Um, the movie's about his daughter getting taken, and, and then he goes back to the life of crime that he once led. And um, he's in this apartment, and it's just disgusting. Like, they're missing walls. There's, like, buckets of things everywhere. And it was, like, the same day that I was cleaning my apartment, and the two things just connected. I was like, this is not a given. The cleanliness of this apartment is not just a given. I did it. I was the one. This place was not clean when I took over. Well, you also never experienced living with, uh, like, a bunch of other roommates? Well, uh, yeah, I kind of did. Well, you had, um, yeah, you had some sort of strange examples, but yeah. living in, not residence, but living in a student house mm -hmm. is a totally different animal, because there's no one grown up, yeah. per se, grown up. That place you had, uh, that lot, like, the, the last place you ended up having, um, was terrible. Like, when you had described it to me, you were like, it's like a seven, a seven bedroom, like huge home. And I was imagining it being a really nice place. And when I went there, I was like, this is, this is dirty. This is dirtier than my place. Well, you have to imagine. So imagine a house with seven bedrooms and three bathrooms. So it's obviously a big house. Yeah. 
Now, we moved into this house. It was already dirty, right? Like, the corners and stuff were dirty. Yeah. The basement was filled with junk. Like, that actually, that was our, our big uh, success, was we took all the bullshit out of the basement and made it a dirty sitting room. <laughs> that was our success story. So, you have to understand, like... <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Like, no one has a desire to clean up stuff from people who lived there before the seven of us that lived there. Yeah. And then once you establish that it's kind of okay to have your house a little dirty, like, people are just not going to do that cleaning. And, like, yeah. when I sweep my room, all that stuff that you can't get in the dustpan is definitely getting swept into the hallway. I you can't... know, well, the hallway's already dirty, in for a penny. I can't believe how, how much of a child I was until, like, a month ago. Because I was like, the, the vacuum that I have is is not working very well. And so Dad, being the lovely guy he is, just buys me one. <laughs> and I said, he brings he brings me a, a vacuum and he goes, and I go, that's the exact same model I have. And he goes, really? Then I don't know if yours is broken. And he goes and he cleans it. He empties well, the... Yeah, you say clean, he, but it's... Uh... He took the filter out and cleaned it. And now it works like a fucking Dyson. And it, to be specific, this is not a brand deal or anything, but it's a Bicel, and it's fan fucking tastic. It is so good that I went and I, like the day after he cleaned it, I cleaned so many things in this apartment that were never cleaned, and I know this for a lot of reasons. I was gonna get a little too personal there, <laughs> but based on the accumulation in the corners of the of all the of all the all the, the where the floorboard meets the floor, no, no, wait, sorry, when the floor and the wall meet was not clean for a very, very long time. And I can tell this by how much there was and how easy it was to vacuum it too. It was like, whoop, and now it's just- Now it's clean. Beautiful. And yeah. it's only me and, and my cat and we don't make much of a mess. So now now that I can, now I'm cleaning things just one at a time. And, uh, oh, I want to talk talk quickly about something. I don't know if- yeah, that'll go away. Okay. Oh shit, oh Never fuck. use a cell phone as a timer. It will interrupt you. Yeah, get yourself a real timer. Um. I don't think we've ever really talked about this, but I have pretty intense chronic anxiety, and uh, I've I, I'm 24, and and one day like beginning of the year, I was try I couldn't get to sleep, and I realized I've had the same level of anxiety since I was probably 14 or more more than that, and I always thought that when I grew I would just grow out of it. I thought it was just part of who I was as a kid. And now, like, then I just woke up one day and I was like, I'm 24, and I have the same chronic anxiety, and sometimes worse than when I was, like, 10. Well, because you have more issues. Yeah, well, and then I realized, like, this is, this is, a, this is a thing I have to deal with, not something that's going to go away. And that was actually a big step, in realizing that I need to conquer it instead of thinking it'll just go away. But something that I've been really enjoying recently is I get this feeling a lot. Especially on my days off. I don't really get this when I have when I work, but on my days off, I have this weird s feeling where I don't want to do anything specific, but I also can't do nothing. Um, you know that feeling when you're waiting on somebody to pick you up, and like they're they're, they're going to come and pick you up, and you're going out somewhere, and they're supposed to be there, and you don't really know when they're going to be there. So you're sitting there, and you're like. I don't want to start anything because they're going to be here soon, but I also don't want to sit here doing nothing because I don't know how long they're going to be here for, how long it's going to be. Like, I get that uh, on a re pretty regular basis where I'm like stuck between, I, I can see you're, you're a little uh, preoccupied. <laughs> There's a little uh, deep conversation for how... Uh, well, I was going to say, it's kind of funny how you're like, oh, we've never talked about this. So like on the show, you know, like yeah. <laughs> live is the best way to do it. But I, I really do know what you mean. It's not something the journalist has escaped. Where I'm supposed to, but uh, I'm a terrible, terrible mercenary. But I think that, that something that really does help with anxiety is anxiety sort of comes from not knowing what to do. Yeah. And I guess I've always been a person who's kind of super willing, ah, someone who's super willing to um, take on fights. And I think that's one of the reasons that I didn't have that much anxiety is that. You know, like someone who's a professional fighter really doesn't have much anxiety at all, right? Because they're not really afraid of anything. Yeah. But sometimes it's not, it's not the fight. It's not you're worried about hi someone hitting you. It's you're worried about someone, you know, being really rude or mean to you or having yeah. a, falling out with your family. Yeah. But sometimes it's important to have those things. To be anxious about stuff? 
No, to to have those fights. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think these guys are spawning. Well, there's, there's two there's two types of anxiety. There's adaptive and maladaptive. And adaptive is the type that tells you like, oh, I have to I have bills to pay or the lights won't be on anymore. Maladaptive is um, I'm gonna have to talk to someone on the phone regarding my bank account tomorrow, and I'm really nervous about it now. That's maladaptive, and that's what I have. It's mostly maladaptive. Um, but something I've been doing recently when I don't know what I want to do, like I had yesterday, is I just pick something and I clean it. And I cleaned a shit ton of stuff yesterday. And then didn't really feel good about it until later when I opened up the drawer and went, Oh, <laughs> that's really clean. Well, and that's the thing. That's your fight. The, the cleaning yeah. you've been putting off because it's so dirty and you don't want to do it. But what you don't realize is that not cleaning it is what's making you feel like yes, that. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's the same as when... Like a lot of people will have issues with, you know, how they look or how they feel on a daily basis or, you know, um, like what they're eating and it'll make them anxious. But if they were to focus more yeah. on what it is that they're eating, that would get rid of the anxiety because you'd be able to go, well, I don't feel great today, but I know I'm eating well and I know I will feel good again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a it's a tough struggle. And I also have, um, I, OK, I really don't like it. A lot of people self-diagnose OCD, and they think that OCD is like straightening out pens and stuff and making sure things are in order. But obs obsessive compulsive disorder is any compulsive obsession. I, I know that sounds like you can't define the word with the word, but it's when you can't not do it. Like, if, like I, I, I have to wash my hands after touching doorknobs. Doesn't matter which doorknobs they are. Actually, no, it does. That's what's so weird about it. Outside doorknobs. If I touch the, the doorknobs going outside the balcony or the front, I have to wash my hands after um, wherever I get to or if I come back inside. But I can touch this inside doorknob with no problem. Really? That, and that's how I know it's not, it's not, my, um, it's not my, my subconscious telling me you need to make sure that you're clean. It's, it's, a, it's a maladaptive issue that stemmed from belief, I guess. Well, what people don't always capture... Ugh. What people don't always capture is that when you have some sort of a habit or constant when you're a child, that lasts into your adulthood in it a does. big way. Did you did you want to keep on? Like, is this your? Did you want to do one more episode and we yes. can continue this? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back ah! with uh, more deep conversations over complicated. M military operation. Yeah, while I murk people.